Hi, this is Aliki from the Bliss and Happiness Summit. And today I'm very excited to have Pascal Hannessy with us. Welcome, Pascal. Hello. Thanks for having me, Aliki. It's so good to be here. Likewise. And I'm really excited because Pascal's also in New Zealand. So um, we're from the Australian New Zealand territory here coming to you live from down under. Mm -hmm. uh, so, look, I'd love to introduce you to Pascal. Um, one, because Pascal's had a corporate experience and background in the matrix. Um, you're also a lifestyle transformation specialist and you're known as a rainmaker because you precipitate growth and success for you and the visions for a great life. And, and what I love is that you, um, you've got that background and you've made a transition, not only um, through your own experience, but also helping others. Can you please tell us a little bit about um, how you became the rainmaker? You obviously already were from birth, but tell us a little bit about what inspired you to change career and, and how and, and then the line of work that you're in. Thank you. Yes, I will. So, um, coming from the corporate world, I know I know what that feels like. I worked in London in um, immigration, so I was working for New Zealand Immigration, but based in London, and I thought. And according to the rest of the world, I had this prestigious, wonderful job and, you know, it was click, 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 click heels along the floor. And, you know, I had this um, image that I was going to grow a lot and, and do great things in, in the political science world. And it just physically, my, my body didn't like that environment. I, I was often sick every three months. I'd get bronchitis or colds or flu or something. Um, and I found as well that it was kind of soul destroying work because I felt like just a, a monkey flipping paper burgers. Like I was, I was not a, I was not using my gifts and talents. And I was always like, I don't feel useful. I don't feel useful. And people would say, oh, but you fulfill people's dreams here, you know? And I'm like, no, the button click fulfills their dream. I don't offer anything of myself to this work. And I, more and more as the years went by, I just thought, you know, the money, the image of prestige and all of that, it just didn't give me anything. I didn't feel purposeful. And what I found as well with my health declining was that as I returned home to New Zealand, um, I got pneumonia, I was in hospital and I was like lying there on my deathbed with all these doctors going, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna die here, but something's got to change yeah. because I'm only 28 and I shouldn't have a disease that is had by old people you know and so that was kind of my wake up call <clears throat> and from excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me um from there I went and I studied to fitness and health and so I wanted to improve my health but I knew that if I did that I could offer value to other people and so I started a business in, in personal training and I'd done lots of travel and things and amongst that just to kind of explore my own journey and and along the probably about 12 years I was away from New Zealand on and off and during that time I'd have people come to me and ask advice of things I knew nothing about. Um, I had you know alcoholics asking me about what to do about alcoholism and I'd never touched a drop in my life and I was thinking why are they asking me? Um, you know, people, <laughs> people like um, you know big corporate advertisers wanting to you know how to, how do I market this thing? How do I do this? How do I t get into the big leagues? And I'm thinking, well, A, I know nothing about architecture or whatever it was that they were advertising. And But somehow people found that I had a safe place for them to speak. Yeah. And, and and then in my personal training, I found that I was sitting with people and, and looking at their headspace and their heart space and, and trying to find some alignment there yeah. more than, you know, lifting weights or any of that stuff. And so I kind of just migrated throughout my own transformation as well from my health into my own mental state and my own wanting to find purpose and, and offer value and feel like I am here, I do exist. You know, I'm not someone who's just going through the motions just for just for the sake of it. And and then someone said to me, Pascal, you know, you're a rainmaker. I'm like, what's what? And they go, Yeah, you help people grow. And and I was I was always like, I'm sunshine girl, not rain, but then I realised, you know what, without the rain there is no growth. Without the darkness and that time of rest, there isn't that time of growth and that, that, that struggle that keeps us striving and, and growing. And and I've had a lot of beautiful coaches in my time who've given me the advices and the support that I needed to, to make shifts. And so I thought, well, I've got to do this because it doesn't feel like work to me. 
you know, it feels good. I feel like I'm giving of my heart and my soul and myself to my work. And that's really the feeling I think everyone should feel in, in their work because we work most of our lives, yeah. you know. Okay, so a couple of things I loved about what you just said. Uh, well, two things actually um, in particular I'd love to draw out a little bit more on is you mentioned purpose. And then you also mentioned doing what I love. It's not work to me. So what that says to me is you're coming from a place of overflow mm -hmm. versus a place of depletion mm -hmm. um, where you, um, you're, you're able to give and receive and exchange but then also feel fulfilled. So I'd love to ask you a little bit about um, the process of being able to um, rather not define your purpose but to move into that, not only through how folks would recognize you, but from within yourself. Can you share a little bit about that that part? I think probably the what is my purpose is the biggest question on people's minds. And I think some are afraid to even go there. Mm. Um, but for me, I just, I was like, I could feel it in my bones. I could feel it in my spirit. I was like, I'm nearly there. Like when I worked with with immigration, I was like, this is good, but I'm not in my thing yet. This isn't, this doesn't flow freely for me. I don't feel like I could do this forever. And so um, then I worked in education and I was like, it's close, but it's not there yet. And then I worked in health and I was like, it's very close and I'm educating, but it's not there yet. And that's when um, life coaching came to me. And something I did, and, and this is actually an exercise that I highly recommend people to do, mm. is I wrote... Um, an email to about half a dozen of my closest friends, the people that I knew, no matter what I'd ask them, they would be truthful with me. They would be really um, like coming from a place of compassion and love for me. And they would, they would just be honest in, in, in what they, they said about me. And I asked them three main questions. And one was, what are my hidden talents? What are my gifts? What are the things that you see that I'm good at that I might not even see in myself? Mm -hmm. And what are my most shiny characteristics? Those things that, you know, people compliment you on, but you, you, you're not necessarily taking it in that you're, you are that person. So, and I, I found with across these emails, like these words would jump out at me, you know, and I had, I had good communicator and listener and writer and I'm trusting and friendly and um, approachable and able to um, counsel and I, you know, all these sorts of things. And I was just like, that's it, you know, they see this in me and they've always seen it. And I never saw it in myself because I didn't, well, I had that whole, um, I'm not good enough thing. Yeah. Hello, every woman in the world. Um, I see you. Yeah. You know, I had this and I was a rescue martyr type, you know, I would, give of myself and not give to myself and so in seeing that I was like this is a gift I can give myself if I would only have the courage to to try something new and so the journey was in finding my purpose it was really first starting with let me just find me little me you know and what do I what do I feel good in what makes me feel like I'm growing and what makes me feel like I'm I matter because the whole I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, pretty enough, smart enough, whatever, enough, complex, cuts every area of life yep. unless you can, you know, start to weed that mind garden. And, and for me, um, the, the I'm not enough thing ran through through everything. And I, you know, I always felt um, less, like, not, not totally invisible, but kind of like, oh, well, you know, you're you're good to have around, you know, we'll, you know, she's nice, she's energetic and but not like just at me, like look at me. And I, during my personal development journey, so I spent about two or three years traveling around the world, going to seminars and doing all this stuff. And I found myself on the, on the edge of a stage, probably about 300 or so people in front of me. And it was my responsibility to energize them. And get them going, you know. And I'd practice this routine day in and day out until, you know, because I was so nervous for me to, you know, get up and speak in front of people and do this thing. And I got on there and I went through it and it just rocked. It was awesome. And so when I finished, I was like, yeah, you know, like really anchor that in. And then I 
bawled my eyes out like the ugly cry, you know, the one where you're just heaving and I've got a microphone on and everyone is like, they can hear it all. And they just erupted in cheering and yelling and like all this stuff. And I mean, I get goosebumps sharing the story because that is the defining moment where I let in unconditional love, where I felt it to my being. And it was, you know, the instructor there had told me to stand there with my arms outstretched right on the edge of the stage, like, breathe it in, let it into every pore, into every cell of your body. And that that moment honestly changed my life. It changed me because I was like, finally I see the love that people have wanted to share with me for so long that I've deflected, that I've been too modest or humble or whatever thing I want to label it with. No, no, no. And it's just a crock because it doesn't, it's, it doesn't bring forth life. You know, it's like continually deadening myself. Mm. And and I see that so often now because, you know, the things that you are, you see in other people, that mirroring. And exactly. it's so sad because I'm like, you know, you are actually a shining beauty. Yeah. You, you have so much to offer and you're here to do great things. And yet you're selling yourself short doing this role or being in that relationship or whatever it might be, you know, and... Yeah, I'm I'm so grateful, honestly, so grateful for those for those people and and what they did for me. It was amazing. It's you know what I love about that too. I, um, I'm getting a sense that you were really um, open, not only open like connected, but it it was like a point of vulnerability as well, where yeah. that's that's where your uh, creativity really truly shines at that point where you're just all open, and that that's just yeah. that's beautiful. And I love when you also said the mat let you matter. And then, you know, there's there's matter as well, right? You matter and all matter. Um, I picked that up from it. And that, what you said is unconditional love because that's who we truly are mm-hmm. at our core essence. And however we um, express our gifts through our talents and skills on the outer planet, you know, outer world, you know, that, that's really what our inner purpose is. Yeah. Um, that is a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. And, and I can see now how that would lead into your... You, your ability to nourish and, and give back to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you said um, about uh, being working but not feeling like work. So can you describe, I call it overflow actually, um, can you describe how you would term that and what that feels like to actually have just as much energy going into a session, a client session, or speaking, or an event, or however it is that you deliver your um, your gifts, but then also come out after work yeah. and still still feel um, pumped, energized, um, and inspired at the end of the day. You know, you're not depleted or drained. Can you yeah. share a little bit about that? How that feels, and then you know maybe a couple of philosophies around that. That would be beautiful. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting to just hear that question and to not feel depleted and to have energy at the end of the day and I go oh my gosh I actually do you're right when there was a time where I depleted my being so much that I just couldn't my body just couldn't even do life it couldn't oh it's amazing this work like when I'm I I call it being in my vortex Uh vortex of awesome it's like when I'm in my vortex I feel like I feel at one with everything and everyone and I for me I mean a practice that has really served me is checking my energy before I go to work before I meet a client you know and if I'm not feeling a hundred percent like I can serve this person then I've got to do something fun I've got to go for a walk on the beach I live right by the beach in the forest and so I'm very fortunate to amazing to be around this place in nature and or I listen to music or I'll you know just do something that makes me feel alive and happy and just in a place of joy and gratitude and and with that then I'm able to go in and I'm in my flow and things just flow and things happen and I'm a firm believer that everything is perfect for me right now Mm -hmm. so whatever comes is perfect for me right now and that's because everything happens for a reason that reason's there to serve me so I'm observant. I'm, I've got my eyes wide open in this life. You know, I'm going in full, full tilt. Like I'm, you know, just open to it all. And then when I when I leave, I find if I've done that right, 
if I've checked my energy and I've gone in with that intention to serve and that I'm going to have a great time and that's what I'm here to do, then I leave way more energized than when I even got there. You know, so the energy that I've brought, that I've, I've, I've made an effort to bring, then is no effort. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's there. And then I come back and, you know, my husband and I have this beautiful practice at the end of our day. We talk about the, the top three things as, you know, our biggest win for the day, our greatest learning, and the thing for which we're most grateful. Mm. And, and that just makes me go and reflect on my life and go, you know what? I was successful today. Because for so many years, I worked in that world of going, how do I become successful? You know, if I have this promotion or I earn this bracket of money, you know, or I have that name above my door, then I'll be successful. And it just was, it tastes like ash in my mouth now to to say those words, thinking about those things. And I, I ask people to define their own level of success. You know, no keeping up with the Joneses. It's. You choose what makes you feel good because that's the most important thing. And you, you choose what makes you feel successful because that's, it's your life, you know. And so we talk about what's our biggest win and it might be the silliest little thing, you know. It might not even be something that someone else would, would be proud of. But for us sometimes, some of those days, you know, you're kind of like, I'll hunt around and I will find one thing that is my biggest win. And that's, yeah, that's kind of how I I feel in my flow. I feel like... And my, my husband will say to me, are you in the vortex, babe? And I'll be like, yep. And he goes, right, I need you to make this decision, you know. And we've made an agreement where yeah. only the one who's in their vortex gets to make the big decisions in life. If you're out of it, then it's not serving. And it means, you know, when you're out of it, it's like when you've got negative thought patterns or scarcity mentality or, you know, complainers or whingers or whatever. Or, you know, and sometimes those moments come. And we'll check each other and we'll be like, hey, you know, come on, you know what you're saying there, right? What you say is, so if that's how you feel, then then that's what is. And I'm in the vortex, so I'm going to make the big decisions today. That's um, that's really key what you just said, um, only because I know you, you can't necessarily, well, it's an, I think it's an Einstein quote, um, you know, you can't solve a problem from with, within the frequency of where it was created. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's important to be, you know, in the vortex, like you said, into that state of unconditional love, or where um, everything just is as it is. Your your heart and mind is wide open. Your, um, you know, you're heightened um, on a vibrational level to make, you know, a decision that's a decision now that is all you can affect anyway, versus being in the future or the past. And I, I love that you said that. I also love those three questions uh, at the end of the day, because in a way, almost. You're, you're intending and, and your intention to receive those three golden nuggets throughout the day is like a bigger swing, like where am I going to win today? Like it's a win-win for me and others. Um, your greatest learning and what are you grateful for? Because when I believe when you're grateful, what, the more you're grateful for, the more you get to be grateful for. Absolutely. It's so true. I, I love that you said that. And you said you define your own success. And you, you also mentioned, Pascal, um, you know, and, and I know this too, just having been in corporate for 21 20- years and you know on the fast track and groomed you know smart female whatever it is bright hard worker um, it, it, it's like well when you get this you will be successful that's just like oh when I get the car I will be happy when I buy the house I will be happy they're conditional they're yeah. conditions that that don't necessarily fill your heart with the joy and the fun that you were saying that you can find in just the simplest things and it's also too, always in the future. There's never any present moment. And I'm like, you know what? We only have now. So what are, you know, what are you grateful for now? What do you have now? And honestly, if I, if I had the time to go through what, what a shift my life has taken just in 2014 to now, like, honestly, everything I have right now, I didn't have 12 months ago. And including the husband and the, the house and the, like everything, everything. And the beauty of it is, was that I knew all of that stuff was with me now. Like I was last year, you know, I was practicing, what do I have now? Gratitude of what we have is honestly the, one of the most important practices I think I've added to my life. Just being appreciative. To someone who lived through the Christchurch earthquakes, lost their family home, left with nothing but my passport and the clothes on my back. I know what it's like to lose stuff. 
And when you can be grateful in a place where you have nothing and around is a war zone and, you know, I, I know what it's like to lose the love of your life, I, you know, all these things, lose, nearly bankrupt, done that, you know. <laughs> and when you can be grateful for I have a body, I have a mind, I have good eyesight, I have, you know, you're reaching for things but start to grow it from what you have. Um, I have people around me that love me. I have a great family. I have an abundance of food and good, fresh, clean water, things like that. Yeah. As you grow that that vault of, of things that you have and things that you are, you know, it's that, that beingness as well. I'm grateful that I'm a person of integrity. I'm grateful that I have these gifts and talents that I can add value to people's lives. They grow and grow and grow. And that, for me, really got me into my vortex. And that's because you can't imagine what it feels like to be at a high frequency, to operate at that level consistently until you go there. Mm-hmm. But you can take yourself there easily by expressing gratitude and affirmations, you know, that I am enough, drum it in, I am enough, I am enough, or whatever it is, the opposite of that negative little voice that goes on. And, and I think that um, from what you're saying, and I'm, I'm picking this up, to is not only the gratitude and your ability, you know, it's like a tool, you know, it's an exercise of the heart. Mm. The more you do that, your heart, your expression, your creativity, it just expands. That's what I got when I felt you say that. That's what I felt from you, rather. Um, But then also the drumming in of the the affirmations, and and I believe that um, it's not more of a point of what you will be. It's who you are now. But then also in the vortex, like you said, um, if you're cultivating that feeling of gratitude and opening your heart and mind in the present now, that's when these affirmations become more effective, literally, and switching off the negative and on the positive, but more in alignment with your highest. Yes, absolutely. That's because the other thing well, is, yeah, yeah. And if if you're if you're expressing this now and you're living in the present moment, then nothing can touch you. Right. You know, right. it's like. Projecting always into the future is like you never get there. Mm. And then you get that car or that house or whatever, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Happiness was 10 years ago. I ought to have lived it then. Because then there's always – you're continuously growing, and then there's always something more that you want to create. And if you don't live now and and be joyful now, then it's kind of like always this race to get to somewhere that you're never going to get. It's always elusive, you know, mm. powered now, definitely. Yeah, no, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, now, tell us a little bit about um, some of the, the ripple effect of this work, not only for yourself and others, but what you've seen happen for some of your your clients and the, the groups that you've um, supported. It's, it's actually beautiful you asked that question. I got a call a couple of nights ago from a man that I was – um, I was coaching probably about two years ago now mm-hmm. and I was referred to him and at the time I thought to myself this is way out of my capability and then someone had said to me no no you wouldn't have been sent this person unless you could deal with his his issue and it was amazing because the journey as I went through with him he he kind of was like, you know, you've, you've taken the blinders off, you've, you've helped me. This is someone who was committing self-harm and all sorts of things and had a really, really traumatic history. And now he calls me up and he's just like, I've been practicing the tools for so long and I've met an, a new lady and, like, my life has turned around. I spoke to his boss, who's the one who'd, who'd paid for him to go through coaching with me, and he said he's transformed his workers Like, his team are so much more happy with the way he works. He's getting more done. He's just, he's just a, he's a different person. And I was like, oh, doesn't that feel good to just have made an impact on someone's life? Mm -hmm. And I hear stories like this all the time, and it just makes me feel like, thank, you know, I'm grateful. Thank you for being a vessel to, to be able to share this energy with people and, and have them transform their lives because everyone can. Yes. There's no, like, you have to be a certain kind of person in order to transform and be whatever level of amazing you want. It's just, you know, just be a little bit open, open that crack a bit. And and that vulnerability, I think, is key, you know, expressing vulnerability, which is why I always share with people my stuff because I'm like, you know, I'm not, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, you know. I know what it's like to to have troubles and to have struggles and to, to work through them. 
And I think that's that's the beauty of coaching. I'm not looking for what's wrong within someone. I'm looking for what's right. Okay, that that's right on the key there. You're looking for what's right and how that person, the glimpse of where they're already whole and perfect, mm. full and fulfill the way that they are now. Mm, absolutely. I love that you said that. That's just so beautiful. And and that story, I can feel how much it warms your heart just from yeah. you. That that kind of feedback is just, it seriously, it just makes me glow as well. Um, you know, I've been you know in management and leadership as well, and and or even just helping somebody and seeing them prosper or whatever it is through the vehicle of the work or the job. That does it. It makes you smile. And um, but I, the, what you just hit on right there is. Not trying to fix something that's broken, but to to really um, see them whole as they are, and that's how they grow into that who they really are. Exactly, and it's a facilitation of yeah, so them figuring out their own. Like you have it all within you. Everyone does. Yeah. It's just maybe the how, and and because I'm not in someone else's emotional jar, I'm not attached to their story, so it's it's easier to to reveal, you know, to shine back to them, look, this is what you're living. This is, this is, these are the blueprints you've got because of the words you, you speak and the way that you feel about yourself and so on. And I love it when someone gets it, you know, that, that kind of aha moment where they've just gone, huh, I've been living that for 20 years, you know, and I can actually change it through choice. It's awesome. It's an amazing gift. Very yeah. empowering. Absolutely. Yeah, Pascal, this this I really love this conversation with you. Thank you so much for sharing this work with us. Um, I think we've all got a couple of questions we can ask ourselves for the day. Um, I think that um, we can um, perhaps also even ask some of our dearest, closest friends to come back and tell us a little bit about what they see and perceive as you know our strengths and and our where our shiny characteristics come from and what our, our perceived gifts and talents. Yes. Um, I think that's that's given us plenty to go with here. And what I'd love to ask you is, how do people get in touch with you, please? Great, awesome. So people can just go onto Google and find me, um, PascalTheRainmaker.com. So, and anyone who, if you go to PascalTheRainmaker.com forward slash Bliss Happiness, that's a, a hidden page for your listeners. And um, in there, you'll see that I'm I'm happy to give you all a a one-on-one -on -one discovery encounter, which is really an unpacking of whatever area of life you want to unpack and just find if there's any dissatisfaction and how we can work through it. It's no obligation. It's just I want to meet your listeners because I think they'll be amazing people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd love to offer that. I believe that you're all amazing people, absolutely. Um, Pascal, thank you again. Um, it's beautiful to chat with you and um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me here.